Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon to you and thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald in for Karen Drew, who is on assignment today. First at four, no foul play is expected in a deadly home explosion in Northfield Township. A short time ago, police held a news conference and right now their best guess on the cause of that devastating blast is what they call an undetermined fuel air explosion. Investigators say they are doing testing to determine what fuel sources were going to the home at the time. Police stress the investigation is ongoing and had this warning for the public. We ask that the, everybody stay clear of the area. Um, let the investigators do their job, give them room. Um, it is blocked off. It will be, continue to be blocked off and only accessible to the, uh, to the residents. Um, as the chief said, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families uh, and friends of the victims. The only resident of the home on Winters Lane was 72-year-old Richard Pruden. He remains in critical condition. His daughter, her husband, and their three children were visiting from Arkansas. Their 16-year-old son survived the blast, but the rest of his family was killed. Plans are underway for a vigil to honor them this coming Saturday at Whitmore Lake High School at 3 in the afternoon. Well, the murder case surrounding a local Jewish leader is moving forward with the next critical hearing set. 28-year-old Michael Jackson Bolanos is charged with felony murder in Samantha Wool's death. A probable cause conference was held this morning after being delayed so prosecutors could turn over more evidence to his defense attorney. The next step is a preliminary hearing, which is now scheduled for January 16th. Wool was the board president of a downtown synagogue. She was found stabbed to death outside of her Lafayette Park home back in October. Wyandotte police are investigating a shooting that left a woman dead and her boyfriend injured. Investigators suspect the couple got into an argument at their apartment on Sycamore, that's near Eureka Road. They say that somehow the man suffered a cut to his leg and the woman was shot in the head. She died from her injuries. Last we checked, the man is in custody. We're going to keep an eye on that investigation for you. Well, the city of Detroit wants to dramatically boost ridership on the People Mover, and that means that you can save money when you're downtown. That's because free rides start today. The Zero Fare pilot program is underway, using paid sponsorships to offset the revenue typically collected from passengers at the stations. Ridership on the People Mover has nearly doubled from 2022, but it is still 42% of pre-pandemic levels. The city would also like to see more people using the mover as it welcomes the NFL draft to town later this year. Well, plenty of people in Michigan are wondering who a lucky Powerball winner might be, and some are probably also wishing that they bought their tickets in Grand Blanc. Right now, we know that the winning ticket was sold at the Food Castle on East Grand Blanc Road in the suburb of Flint. The ticket is worth $842 million with annual payments or $425 million for the lump sum. Of course, that's both pre-tax. The owner of the Food Castle will receive 50 grand for selling the ticket, and we will let you know when the winner comes forward. They do have one year from the date of the drawing to claim that prize. All right, turning now to the first forecast for you, it is another gloomy gray winter day. And we can see maybe a little bit of blue sky along Detroit's <laughs> riverfront and maybe some changes coming up. Kim Adams is here now with a look. Hi, Kim. Hi, Christy. Well, of course, just as the sun is about to set here in about an hour, we start to see a few breaks of that sun. Otherwise, it's a chilly, gloomy afternoon, as you said, with temperatures in the low 30s out of the airport. The reason we didn't get into the mid to upper 30s today was because we just had that layer of clouds that just won't get out of here. In fact, that's been an issue for uh, a week now where we expected partly sunny skies and barely got any sunshine at all. 34 downtown, also in Mount Clemens and Port Huron, 32 in Monroe, Adrian, Ann Arbor and also in Howell. It's a little bit of a breeze today, so our wind chills make it feel like it's only in the 20s, so an added chill in the air. Now tomorrow we start out the day with clouds and the day with perhaps a few light snow showers, and we'll talk about that in the forecast. All right, now some breaking news for you from Harvard University. The school's first black president has announced her resignation. You may remember that Claudine Gay was under fierce criticism for her testimony on Capitol Hill about anti-Semitism on campus. Then conservative activists started digging into her academic career, accusing her of plagiarism. Harvard stood behind her, saying it found no evidence of research misconduct, but Gay would update her dissertation. 
She is now the second Ivy League president to resign following that heated hearing in D.C. Well, overseas, we are tracking a double dose of tragedy for the people of Japan related to a major earthquake. Take a look at this video from an airport in Tokyo. The burst of flames you're seeing happened when a large passenger jet collided with a Coast Guard plane. The smaller aircraft was trying to bring aid to an area affected by Monday's earthquake. Coast Guard pilots survived, but five crew members died. 379 people on the jet got out safely. It took six hours to put out the flames. The cause of the collision is under investigation, with police saying they suspect professional negligence in this case. And Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom following the earthquake's aftermath for us. Kim? Hi, Christy. Good afternoon. People on the north central coast of Japan are being warned to expect more aftershocks after an earthquake registering a magnitude of 7.6 damaged thousands of buildings there. Right now, the destruction is so bad it's hard to really track the true death toll and the massive impact it's had on homes there. Right now, about 55 people are believed to be dead, but that number is likely to change. The earthquake also started a fire that damaged more than 100 buildings before it was contained. Thousands of Army personnel, firefighters, and police officers are swarming to the Noto Peninsula, which is the hardest hit area. The regulators say several nuclear plants in the region continue to operate normally. All tsunami warnings were lifted earlier today, so that certainly is a good sign. One Japanese professor says his country is very well prepared for earthquakes. Japan actually gets hit frequently because of its location along the so-called Ring of Fire. It's an arc of volcanoes and fault lines in the Pacific Basin. Residents are encouraged to have evacuation plans and emergency supplies in stock. But still, he says the situation remains uncertain and unpredictable. So, Christy, we'll be watching any new developments, and we'll have another update later on in our newscasts. We'll send it back to you. All right, sounds good. We'll see you in a little bit, Kim. Denver police are investigating a bizarre break-in at Colorado's Supreme Court. Investigators arrested a man that they say fired a shot to break a window, got into the building, and then held a security guard at gunpoint to get access to other floors. The suspect fired several shots. No one was hurt. He eventually called 911 to turn himself in and was taken to a local hospital. Now, police say the incident was not related to ongoing threats connected to a court decision kicking former President Trump off the state's presidential primary ballot. But they are not elaborating or sharing another motive right now. Well, we all know that the new year can be a time for reflection and sometimes redirection. And just because your life doesn't go the way you planned doesn't mean you can't fashion a beautiful plan B. Paula Tutman found a Waterford woman whose life has taken some interesting twists and turns, leading her to big success in the fashion world. My name is Desiree Nicole, creative director and founder of menswear label Top Patrick. When you're on your way to greatness, it doesn't hurt that as an infant, you may have been blessed by the greatest kiss on the forehead. I feel blessed every day. Originally from Waterford, like most any other kid athlete, she grew up wanting to go pro in basketball. A successful athlete at Eastern Michigan University, she was well on her way. I had the opportunity to go play in Italy and the contract fell through. She didn't have a plan B, so she moved to New York with no family, no funds, no prospects, but on a whim, took a sewing class. They had a free sewing class. I think you had to pay maybe $100 for the kit, but from there I was on YouTube teaching myself with like an at-home Joanne fabric sewing machine, and I've used that all the way up until this year. That was 2016, so let's be clear. She taught herself to sew on a $99 low-level sewing machine going to YouTube University, and within two years, had a collection. Two years later, which is four years after learning to sew, she opened the store, Todd Patrick, in Atlanta. Last year... 218 in Detroit's Eastern Market was the first shop in Michigan to sell her clothing, and now they can't keep it in stock. Like a lot of the stuff is handmade. I cut down the fabrics and patterns myself. The quality, the, the, uh, the attention to detail, it's just a different level of, of attention. And, um, and I think people appreciate that. I'm using the same quality of materials. I'm using the same method as the Gucci's, the Dior's, the Hermes's. She and fiance Gab joined business forces and have traveled 25 countries in five years selling the brand and its soulful, colorful Detroit roots. 
The story of Detroit is woven through her fabrics, designs, colors, and aesthetic. And her proud father talks about that interesting blessing she got as a baby. He was a boxer in Detroit back in the day. And after winning a big fight at the palace at Auburn Hills, a long limousine rolled up and outstepped none other than Muhammad Ali. So he picked her up, uh, kissed her on her head, on her forehead, and said she'd do amazing things in life. It turns out that the blessing of the greatest may have set the world in motion for a young woman who fashioned a future out of grit, determination, and following her own personal North Star. Paula Topman, Local 4. That is a fantastic story. Thanks so much, Paula.